Welcome back to the Cinema 4D tutorial. As promised, this tutorial will be on realistic lighting. But first, a little freebie. You might have noticed that in the last couple of tutorials, every time I move my mouse over objects, they would just highlight constantly. It really bothered me. So if you go up to the filter, this is R14, starting in R14. Go down to Object Highlighting and deselect that. You'll notice if I select it, everything is highlighted. This is a little, it was just annoying me constantly in the last um, in the last tutorial. So now we can get started. You'll notice that I've already created a scene, a floor and a sphere object. And as promised, I was going to show you a new method of lighting. So to create a realistic lighting, we could start out with a light bulb, but that's boring. Let's try something else. So what I'm going to do is create two spheres, uh, sorry, two planes, one, and I'm just going to duplicate that. And the second one will turn off for now. We don't need it right now. So the first plane will become our main light source. So I'm actually going to kind of angle it downwards and change the axis so that I can move it on a world axis and kind of put it over here. So the light's kind of showing downwards. But obviously, if I render this right now, nothing happens. In fact, this is even black from the angle that I'm at. So to do this, to turn this plane into a light source, we have to create a material. So go down here, create new material. This is basically a texture. So I'm going to double click on this so we can see it in a separate window. And you can deselect color, which is almost always there. Deselect that and select luminance. We'll leave that at 100 and I'll leave it at white light for now. And you're pretty much good to go. Now, of course, if I render this again, just for the hell of it, nothing changes. Why? Because I haven't assigned this uh, material to the plane. So I can either drag this material, click and drag onto the plane. You'll see a little plus sign by my mouse. Or I can drag it over here to this plane. And I'll let go and you'll notice it adds it to the back of the plane tags. Now, if I render this again, nothing really happens. To actually get a realistic lighting, we have to change the render settings. Now you'll notice every time I click Command R to render, because I'm on a Mac, Command R, it just renders very quickly. If we want to make a realistic lighting, we have to make the render settings so that the light itself becomes acts more realistically. So to change the render settings, go up here and click on this little gear and um, camera thing. Enter render settings. This has all sorts of things such as the dimensions of your output, how, how you're saving it with file, but we're not really concerned with that stuff for now. What we want is an effect. So click and find yourself global illumination. Select that. That is going to make rendering a lot slower. Now I'm going to render this and you'll notice that my processors are working and suddenly this is a light object and it shines light and everything's very pretty. Now, what exactly did global illumination do? I'm not an expert on it. You can probably look it up on Wikipedia and learn a lot about it. But the basic idea of global illumination is, is that uh, take the real world, for example, if you shine a red light on a surface, say a white wall, and look in an object that is completely hidden from the light source, but the wall can reflect the light onto that object. That object will have kind of a reddish glow on it. That's the red light bouncing from the light source off of the wall and onto the object. That's what global illumination tries to do, tries to emulate in Cinema 4D. It's a very uh, render intensive, uh, processor intensive process, and but it tries to um, recreate a more realistic lighting. And so just for the fun of it, I'm going to actually change the luminance color to a little more of an orange color, actually a very orange color. And if we render this right now, it'll take a moment and we can see again, nice orange kind of light. But this sphere is kind of boring. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to make the sphere a little reflective. And so to do this, you can double click or go up here in basic and select reflection. Now you see the preview is pure reflection. I don't really want that much of a reflection. So I'm going to change the brightness down. Lowering the brightness for reflection decreases the amount that it ref reflects. Excuse me, I can't talk right now. So I'm going to put it around at yeah, 20%. And I'll drag it onto the sphere. 
Now if I render this, the sphere will actually reflect some of the light. Uh, that's much more interesting. But now let's add the second plane. And I'm going to create a very similar effect for the second plane as I did for the first, except on the other side. And if you've seen photographs and have seen kind of light theory, you're probably going to guess what color I'm going to select for this second sphere. So I'm going to make all the same options, reflection, whoops, sorry, luminance I want, and I'm going to make it light blue because blue and orange contrast each other nicely. That might be too bright of a blue, but I think it's okay. And now, oops, if I zoom in a little bit and render that, we get a nice strong contrast. And so you can tell the sphere itself looks a little more realistic and just the overall feel of the scene. The floor kind of looks flat and fake, but that's all right. I could actually pull the sphere out from the floor, kind of make it appear as if it's just kind of resting on the floor. And if I select both of these planes and move them up, now if I render it, it might look a little more realistic, like it's actually sitting on the floor. You can mess around with this a lot. You can change the colors, you can add more lights, and you can create a more realistic kind of light studio setup with maybe two lights on the side and a black background. For example, if I want the floor to be black and just kind of completely invisible, I can change the color and add this to the floor. And now we just have a nicely lit sphere amidst the darkness. Again, this isn't really useful unless you know what you're doing with the lighting, and lighting is difficult. You're probably not going to master it right off the bat. But if you play around with it, and if you mess around with these settings, you can get a kind of idea for it. Just remember that global illumination takes a long time to process, and depending on how good your computer processor is, it might take hours for certain scenes. I mean, obviously this is a very simple scene, but if you have lots of polygons and lots of clutter in your scene and lots of lighting, it might take a while. I know I've had a, I've made a scene once before that took me, I think three hours just to render one still frame. So of course that was on an old computer, which I'm glad I've moved on from. Anyway, that's the basics of just a kind of a realistic lighting setup. If you want to play more of it, or if you have questions, please uh, comment or send me a message. Also, if you like or dislike my videos, please click on the like or dislike button. That's really the best feedback I have for whether these are helpful or not helpful, because a lot of times people don't really feel like commenting, which I don't blame them for. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll hope to see you next time.